Welcome back, everybody. We are on part five, and we're going to continue along with the Hell in a Cell review. Brie Bella versus Nikki Bella was the next match on the card, and this one, if you were not aware, was for... Uh, one of them would be able to essentially take the other one and make them their bitch for the next 30 days. So they would be their personal assistant. So that leads to the normal stuff that we usually see from WWE, which starts off with uh, Nikki Bella, of course, winning this match and dumping a smoothie on Brie Bella's head. You know, that's you got to start off with the good stuff, right? Uh, I actually, I'll give them credit. This was a better match than I was expecting it to be. And, um, it, you know, I kind of enjoyed it for the most part. It could have been really, really terrible. And they pulled out a decent match. And actually, I'll say that this was the better Divas match of the night, which is really surprising considering how much better AJ Lee and Paige are in the ring than the Bella Twins on a regular basis. So thumbs up for the Bella Twins. Multiple other things up as well. Thought it was great that uh, Nikki Bella was adjusting her top before she hit the rock attack. And uh, Brie hit a pretty decent suicide dive, pretty decent missile drop kick and stuff. If she's going to be pulling out this kind of stuff, maybe she's learning quite a bit from Daniel Bryan. And, you know, all good in the hood. So what do you guys think about this? Are you happy with the outcome? You happy with the match? Think it could have been better? Blah, blah, blah. I thought it was a good match for what it was. I mean, it's a stupid concept with the... Uh... Being someone's bitch, except for when I, my Nikki being my bitch, you know what I'm saying? But um, I thought it was a very good match for what it was. Uh, I thought it was actually a lot better than Paige and AJ, which, is better than her, which says a lot because that match was terrible. So I'll have to, I have to tip my hat to these two girls as they pull out uh, a really a better than average Divas match. There we go. It's sad that, like, when we talk about the Divas, when they do a decent match, it's like, wow, they didn't suck for once. <laughs> it's never that you can just give them a compliment, and that's a sad thing. But in regards to this match, I have to agree with Drew. Better than usual, but nothing special, skippable. As far as the decision, it's what I predicted, and it's just more trash on my television. The best outcome of what this match could have been was like there was a trap door in the ring they both fell through and died but that didn't happen so <laughs> it's a little harsh <laughs> alright well next time we have a fucking shitty Bella segment you complain just remember because trap door would have been the resolution to it all <laughs> Dayton what are your thoughts on this match well you said that Brie Bella may have learned something from Daniel Bryan I don't think that Nikki Bell learned shit from John Cena because doesn't she remember when the same thing happened to John Cena and he had to be a slave for the Nexus? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, there. <laughs> that knowledge, huh? All right, so how is this going to end? Is this going to end up being something where Nikki gets the title and Brie, after the 30 days, challenges her for it and she gets the title? Is that going to be a transitional thing? Or is the title not going to be involved whatsoever? How would you like to see WWE take this storyline? If they do get the title involved, I think it would be interesting if Brie wins it and has to give it to Nikki as part of their uh, agreement. Thing. I think if they did something like that, that would be interesting. What, like the gotta... uh, European title, Triple H, Shawn Michaels kind of thing? Sure, why not? But no, like, you know, Brie somehow gets a title shot. She wins, but she has to give to Nikki because Nikki has to do whatever Nikki says. So something like that would be cool. I got a better idea. I want them to take it off TV. <laughs> Entirely just get rid of uh, the whole angle? Yeah, just drop it. They've dropped stories in the middle of them before. Like, we still don't know who freaking killed Vince McMahon in that limo. Or who so, dropped the set on him at the million dollar thing? It was uh, those guys who came out in black masks that one time to beat up the Undertaker. And who lifted that briefcase during that match between Stone Cold and Vince McMahon? Oh, that was me. Sorry about that. Oh. It was me. <laughs> Maybe it was God just getting revenge. That's why we didn't need to see anybody. It's good for you, Ozzy. <laughs> Wigo, what do you think that they should do with the storyline? 
get a bowler. <laughs> what if that was the next thing? It was like, Nikki's like, all right, Brie, since I really fucking hate you, the next thing you're going to have to do is get a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would be staying current with their uh, stuff, kind of like what they did with the ice bucket challenge. Well, what if instead of Ebola, he gave she gave her big Ebola? <laughs> oh, funny. Ha! <laughs> okay, the first onion you're cutting itself. Alrighty, everybody, we're gonna move on here because this isn't going where. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right what do you mean? Right. It's going well. What are you talking about? Part six coming up next: WWE Tag Team Championship Match.